American Secession, The Looming Threat of America's National Breakup by F.H. Buckley. Part 3, Chapter 10, Secession Light. Up until this moment, we've been talking about the benefits of secession and how primarily small governments thrive. And that was presented in a number of ways using a very empirical approach, data demonstrating that small governments do a better job of representing their people, that there's greater wealth, and perhaps even greater happiness. In the last chapter, we varied from that a little bit with the idea that in some cases, big countries actually do better. And here in the last part of the book, part three, we talk about ways that secession can occur, but maybe not in the way that most people would imagine. The chapter of this title being Secession Light. The primary focus of this chapter is ways in which states can simply legislate over federal laws or just simply ignore them. There was a very histor- a good there was a good historical analysis of the doctrine of nullification in which states claimed the power to declare a federal statute void within its borders. This has been rejected by the federal government and most states at this point. And the other idea put forth by James Madison in 1798 of interposition, which simply frustrates federal law. Nullification was born of the 1798 Alien and Sedition Act, which our second president, John Adams, was a part of. And one state in particular, Kentucky, said that that was unconstitutional. The federal government does not have the exclusive right to alter or interpret anything in the Constitution, and proposed that it cannot be the only judge. Every party gets a way of interpreting data in a contract. In theory, there was really no difference between nullification and secession. And this concept of this tension existed right up until the court battles of the 1950s, in which, and I put this in air quotes, it was settled in the Supremacy Clause that a state government did not have the right to alter or interpret a law within its borders. The U.S. Constitution would have supremacy. Interposition is a little bit more complex. Again, James Madison, 1798, in the Virginia Resolutions, declared that states have a quote-unquote warm attachment to the Union. And so when a federal law is passed that is deemed unconstitutional, that the states had a right to, quote, interpose for arresting the progress of evil. So that, in other words, if something wrong is happening, states could do something about it. James Madison denied that the Supreme Court of the United States had the sole authority to interpret the Constitution. States can communicate objections with other states. They can petition Congress for redress. States can propose constitutional amendments. And of course, states can call for a constitutional convention. So there is a number of remedies. And unpopular laws, when there are unpopular laws, people can simply refuse to obey them. And juries cannot convict. This is a very important concept, not expressly laid out by Buckley, but one that should be known that any jury can use jury nullification. It can simply say, yeah, we know that you broke the law, but we disagree with the law, and therefore we're not going to convict. A good case in point to this would be drug laws. Whereas the Federal Controlled Substance Act outlaws marijuana, as an example, marijuana is considered a class one narcotic, the federal government has chosen not to enforce that law in states where the state legislature said, we're going to allow it. Certain states come to mind immediately, California, Colorado. If the federal government comes in and enforces a law, such as a drug law, that a jury in this jurisdiction would simply refuse to convict. A very, very important concept, jury nullification. Tensions between the state and the federal government are used by both the left and the right. So a good example on the left would be sanctuary cities. So again, a 
area, in this case, some on California, decides that we're not going to help the federal government enforce immigration laws. So public officials cannot be compelled to assist federal authority to enforce those laws. There's nothing, there's no, there's no compelling of that act. If there's a federal law that's being broken, it's up to the federal government to enforce it if they have the resources. Which is an interesting, because this actually links back to the American Civil War, which a lot of people don't recognize. The Fugitive Slave Act was a law that was passed that the South became very angry about. It was not being enforced in the North. So in other words, slaves were leaving property, as they were known at the time, were leaving the jurisdiction of the Southern states. They were going to the North, and that federal law, the Fugitive Slave Act, was not being enforced by other states. So that frustrated, of course, the other states in the South and led to a lot of the conflict that we came to know as the American Civil War, which we've discussed might be better known by another name. So those, as an example of a California sanctuary law, Jeff Sessions, a former attorney general, um, said that it likened the laws to quote unquote acts of secession, like in fact, de facto secession. So depending on who controls the government, whether it's a Democrat or Republican, if Democrats are in control, they might say we're in a state government, they might say we're not going to enforce immigration law. And if Republicans are in control, where they are feeling like the larger government is trying to impose unrealistic gun restrictions, then they might say, we're just not going to enforce those laws. We're going to have sanctuary counties or sanctuary state. In fact, Missouri in 2003 passed similar gun legislation, and it said specifically that federal gun laws are null and void in the state, very much like a nullification. Just to exemplify how close that vote was, it only failed by one vote. We hear this a lot. We heard about that in the Parti Québécois up in up in Canada. Their secession movement paled by one vote. And in this case, Missouri, a very pro-gun state wanting to protect its citizens, seeking to nullify federal law, the legislator let it fail by one vote. As the government gets more divided, constitutional showdowns are going to become inevitable. He closes out the chapter with this quote, Healthy interposition is an alternative to the constitutional impasse of nullification or secession. Interposition. An interesting term, not easily defined by the average listener, but one worthy of consideration. A secession light, if you will. We are bordering with the immigration issue, with the gun issue, with the drug issues, on nullification at the state level. And it will be interesting to see how this proceeds going forward. If you haven't done so already, if you could please hit the thumbs up symbol. It does help with the algorithm. It gets this presentation out to others and just boosts it up in the ratings. And that's really helpful. But most importantly, if you could, maybe leave a comment or two. And the best thing you can do is to share it. Thank you again for your engagement and your interest. And we'll see you next time for Chapter 10.